What are the best medium tanks that you can get your hands on in World of Tanks within the tech tree? And this is going to be somewhat opinion based, yes, but I will try and be as objective as I possibly can towards each of the tanks. Just the same way that I did in the last video with the heavy tanks, where you can watch that down below if you missed it, or in a card that should be appearing in the top right of your screen now. And to kick things off, we're looking at the E50M. Now this is an old tank that's been in the game. However, it shouldn't go unnoticed. Even though that the majority of people will say that the E50 at tier nine is better tier for tier. And while I do agree, yes, it probably is. The E50M, the step up in the penetration that you get with the premium rounds compared to the E50, it's just night and day. You can deal with pretty much anyone you meet. What basically happens is when you upgrade to the E50M, you get the tier nine E50 premium rounds as standard, and then you gain 330 heat as your premium round. Now, yes, you do not gain a massive armor improvement or even mobility improvement. However, the gun being better is just making this tank so nice and just such a well-rounded package. You have the armor, you have the speed, you have the durability to actually go and brawl with tanks when you need to, and you can even go and snipe when you want to. You go at 60 km hour top speed, and if you whack a turbo on that, you'll go at 65. And because you weigh so much, you weigh 60 tons in this vehicle, you can ram a lot of things. For equipment, I would still probably recommend the HP rammer and stab, um, or you could forgo that and choose either a turbo or vents instead of the, the HP, depending on how you feel. But even though that this tank may be old, it is definitely still one of the best tanks that you can get your hands on. Next up, we have the Centurion Action 10. Now, this tank recently got buffed, and made it into one of the most well-rounded tanks that you can possibly get. Now, before the buffs, this tank was splitting hairs with the M48 pattern. After the buffs, it's just outright better. It has a very, very nice gun with nearly 3k base DPM. You have 0.32 accuracy and very, very nice soft stats as well. It goes at 55 km hour top speed, which does make it a little bit slower than the E50M. However, the gun and just the overall combat capacity of this tank is far better than the E50M. You do get 268 penetration on the standard rounds, 330 heat on the premium rounds, and the 330 heat will go at 1173 shell velocity, meaning that it is very, very similar in regards to the E50M. The only thing that you need to really worry about this tank is the ammo rack. The ammo rack and that it can get set on fire quite easily. Unfortunately, this tank does have the problem of as soon as you get hit, it's probably going to hit something inside the vehicle. Which then brings me on to the equipment for the vehicle. What I'd recommend is HP, rammer and a stab, the exact same thing as the E50. However, if you do feel like you're getting Amarac a lot, then either swap out the HP for experimental HP or config. If none of that interests you, then you can, of course, go for the standard turbo rammer stab or vent rammer stab. All in all though, this is probably slightly better than the E50M, even if it is just because it can play on a ridgeline a lot better. But for some people, they will prefer the E50M over this, just purely for the accuracy of the gun. Speaking about the accuracy of the gun, that swiftly brings us onto our next tank, the Leopard 1. This tank is probably my favorite tank in the game. It has by far the best gun of any medium tank that you can possibly get, and is a true sniper that can play the role of a tank destroyer, but also get around the map when you need it and actually play aggressive. Now, a lot of people misunderstand the Leopard 1 and think that it is only for sniping. When you need to be aggressive, you can get very aggressive in this vehicle. You may not have any armor, but that doesn't stop it from being one of the most devastating tanks that you can actually come across. Because this tank doesn't care whether or not you are 50 meters from it or 350 meters from it, it will still hit you with near pinpoint precision. Now, you may not have as much DPM as the other tanks. However, with the field mods, you can actually increase your DPM, which is what I would suggest you do, because the base accuracy on this thing is 0.29, meaning that once you get everything all together, you will be very, very accurate. If you include brothers in arms, you include vents, and you include the accuracy module if you really want it, you will be super accurate. And then you can go ahead and pick the DPM field mod 
to increase your DPM at the detriment of the accuracy, but you will still have way more accuracy than most of the other tanks that you'll meet. And it doesn't even stop there, because this has probably one of the best premium rounds in the game as well. It may only be 323mm a pen, which is good for APCR, but it's definitely not, you know, E3 375 millimeters of APCR pen, but it goes at 1,600 shell velocity, which means that no matter what distance you are fighting at, you barely ever need to give lead. And one of the best things about the premium rounds on this tank is that at 500 meters, they go down from 323 millimeters of pen to 315. So even at 500 meters away with APCR, you only lose eight millimeters of penetration. And the standard rounds aren't bad either. They go at 1,480 meters a second, which is slightly slower than the E50. However, you do get 278 millimeters of pen, unlike the E50, which only has 270. So no matter which round you fire, they're going to be very, very fast. So what equipment would I recommend on this tank? Well, there's a few different pieces of equipment that I'd recommend. The first being improved aiming, rammer, and vents. This you can get away with on pretty much every map that you play. You don't necessarily need stab, but you could switch stab out for IAU or the improved aiming unit. When I was free marking the leopard, I used vents, rammer, stab, and the DPM field mod, which meant that I had well over 3,700 DPM and like 0.25 accuracy. Now, when you do get city maps, I would recommend you ditch the stab or IAU and go for HP, rammer and vents, because that is going to help you out the most when you are brawling, because sometimes there's no escaping it and you have to be on a brawling map. If you get Ents, for example, this is a good choice. Himmelsdorf, the ones that you can't really avoid going close quarters with. Now, the Leo one, I'm not going to lie to you, is definitely not the beginner friendly tank and I wouldn't recommend it to people who don't really know what they're doing. However, this is a list for the best medium tanks and you just can't have a list without the Leo. And you also can't really have this list without the CS63. It's as fast as a light tank, it has the armor, it has the gun, it has the DPM. The only real massive issue with this tank is that the gun is so inconsistent and unreliable at times that it is incredibly frustrating. The rest of the tank though, is beautiful. The gun is good enough when it does hit and it's really weird because this gun is not statistically that inaccurate in comparison to some other vehicles but as I said before it does just like to miss sometimes. But the rest of the gun is really really nice. 258 standard pen, 315 premium APCR pen and it is very very fast going at 1410 shell velocity. The standard rounds aren't that bad either at 1,240 shell velocity, so that is very, very fast for AP rounds. But the main thing that sets this vehicle apart from all the others is obviously the turbo mode. By default, you start in the turbo mode, so you don't need to activate it when you spawn in, and you'll quickly be able to get to your 70 km hour top speed limit. And if you're using a turbo, you'll be then going at 75 km an hour. And a turbo is kind of a must, because this tank does not get very good reverse speed. Even though the top speed is very, very good, you only got 20 in reverse. And bearing in mind, that 20 is in the turbo mode. If you're not in the turbo mode, you got 15. By default, the normal mode is 55 km hour top speed, which is more than enough to just get around the map normally and play normally. But then when you do want to get to somewhere, say, flanking all the way around the other side of the map, you have that turbo mode available to you. It does take two seconds to enter in and out of the turbo mode, so keep that in mind. The equipment on this vehicle is gonna be slightly different. Turbo, rammer, stab. Because of the fact that you do not get very good reverse speed, you need a turbo, you need to boost up that reverse speed. Because otherwise, 15 km an hour is not a, not a good number at all. It's just not enough. Especially when you're playing in that kind of peak and shoot uh, environment, where you'll go out, you'll quickly back off. 15, not enough to get out of there fast enough. So a turbo is a 100% a must on this vehicle. Now the gun stats on this vehicle are good enough to remove the stab if you wanted to. So you could choose HP Turbo Rammer, or you could choose Turbo, Rammer, and Vents. Either of them work. There's not really too many equipment choices that don't work on this tank. You want to keep the Rammer, you want to keep the Turbo, and then the last one is kind of up for debate. But overall, the C63 is probably the most well-rounded vehicle 
out of all of the ones that we've spoken about. Way more than the Centurion and way more than the E50M. If you had to get just one medium tank, and it needs to be the best at everything, the CS63 is the best at everything. Apart from sniping. Let, let, may, not sniping, okay? Definitely not sniping. And finally, the STB-1. Now this has the best gun depression of any medium tank at tier 10, and that makes it an extremely good ridgeline tank. However, you aren't invincible in this vehicle, because yes, the turret armor is good enough to deal with the majority of people that you meet. However, once they start firing anything above 300 pen, your armor is going to become useless. And if they know what to do and know where to shoot, you will die. That's not to say though that this tank isn't good, because once it does get hold down and you start firing, you do get a lot of TPM and a lot of damage can be done very, very quickly. You have 258 millimeters of standard pen, and that is AP rounds that don't go super fast, but they go at 1,180 meters a second. And then you have 330 heat rounds, which are just the cherry on top. In my opinion, this tank outweighs the UDES 1516 because of the 330 heat alone and because of the gun. The gun on the UDES 1516 can be incredibly derpy. And I'm not saying that the STB gun is pinpoint accurate and beautiful because it can be very derpy as well but at times when you miss with a UDES compared to when you miss with an STB you have that very very quick reload on the STB whereas with the UDES it's a bit longer and that's going to be the thing that you look at when you compare the STB is it better than the UDES 1516 and in my opinion if you're looking for an actual medium tank then 100% the STB is the tank to be. Now there are a few different choices of equipment on this tank because although I would recommend to the majority of people to have HP, rammer and stab, you could then get rid of the HP and go with vents, which works very, very well, or even a turbo. You could go without the stab. However, it's not one of those tanks that is gonna sit there and snipe. So although yes, you could get rid of it because the soft stats are good enough to do it, I wouldn't recommend it. However, if you did want to, then you could just replace the stab for vents and then keep it however you want it. So you could have turbo, rammer and vents or HP, rammer, vents. Alternatively, you could put HP, turbo, rammer on this thing, but I don't really feel like it needs to turbo and I'd rather have vents in there if I'm not going to be using stab rather than having HP and turbo. But overall, this tank is very, very good especially in a platoon if you can get three of these things and you go on onto a flank somewhere and go on a ridge line you can devastate an entire flank very very quickly so there you go that is my pick for the top five medium tanks that you can grind within the tech tree right now in early 2024 if you didn't already watch the top five heavy tanks video then there'll be a card on the screen right now that you can click and i'll see you all in the next video